If you've ever been in an automobile accident and yet it wasn't your fault, or you're in a struggle to try to get State Farm to pay attention to your diminished value claim, then stay tuned. I'm going to share my true story on how I got this check for $3,363.05. That was my full ask for diminished value. Well, first we have to know what diminished value is. When you're in an automobile accident, your car is worth something prior to that accident. Now, after you get your car fully repaired, it's worth a different value, usually lower. The difference between those two values is diminished value. And it's the best kept secret in the insurance industry because they don't tell you that the insurance company owes you that difference. You have to fight to get that difference all by yourself. In my particular case, back in October of 2018, a woman was backing out of her driveway on her way to go play golf and she hit my legally parked 2016 Audi Q5. Now the car was empty, so obviously the accident was her fault. Now she left a note and her husband behind and when I later arrived, I began to take pictures. I met her husband, he was super nice and he shared her insurance information with me and he also admitted that his wife had hit my car. Now, I was a nice guy and I didn't want to call the police, so I didn't. I didn't want to get anyone in trouble. As I look back on it though, I probably should have called the police and next time I definitely will. Well, the next decision I had to make was what, whether I was going to file an insurance claim with my insurance carrier or with hers. She was insured with State Farm and I wasn't. When I called my insurance company, they said that they would handle everything for me. They would negotiate with State Farm, get my car repaired, and then they would pay me back my deductible. Well, that didn't sit right with me. Why should I have to pay a deductible when we know that the accident wasn't caused by me? So I ended up taking option number two, which was to file directly with State Farm. Now State Farm was great during this process. They got me a rental car. They let me select the collision repair center that, of my own choosing. And I chose Hanania Collision Center in Orange Park, Florida. It's really close to Jacksonville because they're a, an Audi certified collision center. I'll leave their link below in case you wanna use them because they were excellent. They repaired my car. Later, I picked up my car, I turned in the rental car, and then I began to wonder about my diminished value. If I were to ever go and sell this car to someone or try to trade it in, well, they wouldn't give me what the car was really worth right before the accident. The insurance company is there to make you whole. So I began to research how to file a diminished value claim. The first thing I did was I hired an expert. His name is John Hackett from Diminished Value of Tampa Bay. Again, I highly recommend John because he walks you through the process and he's very experienced, especially when filing claims with State Farm. In fact, he loves to do it and has an excellent success rate with them. So I hired him, I paid him $295 and he came up with an expert report for me. It details out what the car was worth prior to the accident, what the car is worth now that it's been fully repaired, and what the difference was. Now I have to admit, I was a little disappointed because John calculated that my diminished value was $2,650. And I thought to myself, if I were gonna go buy that same car and there was one that wasn't in an accident and another that was, I would pay far more than $2,650 in difference for the one that wasn't in an accident. But I went with John's expert opinion because he's uh, well known in the industry, even though his opinion was conservative. Next thing you do, now that you have your expert's opinion in his report, is that you have to send that into State Farm. Now John was really nice. He went above and beyond for me and sent the report directly to State Farm with the claim number that I gave him. And a few days later in the mail, I received a form letter. Here it is. It begins, Thank you for the opportunity to review your request for diminished value to your vehicle. We have been unable to make contact with you to discuss your diminished value claim. However, 
we have evaluated the submitted documentation. Let me pause there. I began to learn something about State Farm in this process. Even though they're supposed to make me whole, they're really not looking out for my own interest. The same thing happened as they were repairing my car. Uh, I noticed that they tried to use used parts on my car and they weren't really looking at, out for my behalf. So when they said, we have been unable to make contact with you, I thought to myself, my phone works. You have my cell number. It never rang. <laughs> Let me continue. Diminished value, they say, is the alleged difference between a vehicle's value before an accident and its value after proper repairs are completed. We believe that the documentation which has been provided to date does not substantiate that the value of your vehicle has been reduced due to the damage sustained from the auto accident. An appraisal must show the fair market value of the vehicle immediately prior to the loss and after proper repairs. They go on to claim that the appraisal failed to prove the fair market value and that's why they denied the claim. Interestingly, this form letter is one that after doing research, State Farm sends out almost 100% of the time. Obviously, I was upset by it. So I picked up the phone and I called State Farm and I told them I received this form letter from them and I wanted to get some more information. Their customer service representative began to explain to me that State Farm really doesn't believe in diminished value. They believe that they've paid me my full claim and so there's no way to prove to them that they owe me more. I thought to myself, wow, they really don't care. It's obvious that if you look on the Carfax report that my car has been in an accident. That accident was not my fault. Before the accident, it was worth much more than after the accident. So I tried to get them to acknowledge that diminished value existed. This customer service representative put me on hold. He went off and he must have done some number crunching. He came back and he said, I tell you what, even though we don't believe there was any diminished value in this particular case, we'll offer you $1,500. I thought for a minute, maybe I should take it. But then I asked a key question, and I really encourage you to ask this question as well. What methodology did you use to come up with 1500 for the diminished value for my car? Immediately, the customer service representative declared, it's not the diminished value of your car. It's just simply a number that I'm allowed to offer you in order to settle this particular situation. So I rejected his claim. I hung up and I thought to myself, what are my next steps? I contacted John and he said, why don't you call him back and see if they'll come up in their offer to a number somewhere in the middle. So I decided to do that. It sounded reasonable. And I called them back, spoke with the same customer service representative. And I said, I think it's $2,650 according to my expert. You think it's somewhere around 1500, even though you're claiming that's not the diminished value of the car. And so I said, how about $2,100? Pay me that and we'll settle this issue and it'll be resolved. The customer service representative said, I'm not authorized to give you any more than 1500. So we reject your offer. I thought to myself, wow. So I said, to the customer service representative, you're leaving me no choice but to take your insured to court. I'm going to have to sue them. He said, sir, you're very welcome to do that. And our conversation ended. I thought to myself, is State Farm really looking out after they're insured? Really what they're doing is they're taking a chance that no one would take them to court. So immediately I began to research and came up with, I'll take them to small claims court. Now our accident happened in Volusia County. So I went to the Daytona Beach Courthouse after doing research and filed a small claims court suit directly against the defendant. I didn't name State Farm in the suit at all because she was at fault, she hit my car. I filed that suit for $2,650 plus $295, which was the fee 
I had to pay to get the expert's report. At that moment, I also started logging all of my expenses, and that really helped. So I filed the, the small claim suit. I send a summons to Oklahoma. She lived in Oklahoma. Even though she hit my car in Florida, she was vacationing at the time and visiting a friend. And so I, I sent a summons to Oklahoma and the Oklahoma Sheriff's Department, and they tried to serve it, but she wasn't there. Turns out her and her husband were back in Florida on a vacation, on a cruise. And uh, the person they were visiting helped me to know when that cruise would conclude and when I could serve the papers to them directly here in Florida. So when the first summons doesn't work, you get an alias summons. The people at the courthouse are very helpful and they help you fill out all the paperwork. And it's pretty simple. So I paid the fees to get an alias summons and the Volusia County Sheriff's Office served her when she got off the cruise and came here into Volusia County again. As you can imagine, they were very upset. Now, I tried to work with them. I went to their friend's house that they were visiting and I shared with them that State Farm left me no choice but to take them to court. And so I had to sue them. But all they had to do was give the paperwork directly to State Farm and State Farm would assign an attorney and fill in for them. It turns out that's what they did, even though they were very upset with me personally. They should have been upset with State Farm and not with me. When you file a small claims suit, you go get a pre-conference trial date. That's the day that you go. There's no arguments given, but you appear before the judge and you meet the uh, defendant's attorney and you try to negotiate things out, and then you declare before the judge whether you were able to work things out or not. Well, I met the attorney from State Farm, and I gave her all of my expenses because to file summons, to file the small claims court, my expenses kept adding up. And so she asked, what would it take to settle this today? I told her $3,363.05. Her immediate response was, there's no way. If we weren't giving you $2,100, we are not going to give you that. She told me she's authorized to still extend the same offer of $1,500 to me. I bit my tongue and I was able to not laugh in her face at that. It turns out that she didn't have the authority to go up any higher. She called her appraiser, she texted him, but he didn't get back in time to her before the judge came in. So the judge comes into small claims court and first she gives a, about a 15 minute dissertation that's very informative. The judge claims that you must prove two things in order to win your small claims case. The first, liability. The second, damages. You have to prove that another person was at fault for your damages. And then you have to prove the amount of your damages. Well, I had the second part taken care of. My expert, his opinion, he was willing to come to Daytona Beach and testify on my behalf, so that was covered. What wasn't covered was the liability. But remember, she lived in Oklahoma. So on the way out of the court, after we set the trial date, I spoke with the farm attorney and I told her, I said, I want to be a nice guy. This is really between the two of us, me, the plaintiff, and you, State Farm. It's not really with the defendant, although I had to sue her because she's the one who was at fault. I don't want to have to summons her again and make her travel all the way from Oklahoma to Florida in order to appear as my first witness. The attorney said something interesting. She said, why would you have to summons her? Why does she have to testify? And I said, because the judge said I had to prove liability. And unfortunately, if you remember, I didn't get a police report. She said, well, you're welcome to do that, but you don't have to. I'm not going to argue against uh, liability in this case. Well, State Farm, honestly, at this point, I didn't trust them for all the things that they went through. So I told her, let's put that in writing. I did a little more research. Google is a great resource for this on a joint stipulation. The two sides can stipulate what they agree to and the facts in the case. So I told her, please send me a joint stipulation. She did. 
Her joint stipulation simply stated that liability would not be discussed in this case. I thought to myself, that's not what the judge said. So instead, I responded with an edited statement. And I said in that statement that her client was liable for all damages due to this accident. This is a fact and it will not need to be proved in court. And I send it back to her on the joint stipulation. It turns out that as she was doing that, she also got a call back from the appraiser. And so she replied not to the joint stipulation. She replied with an offer of $2,000. <laughs> I told her that's unacceptable to me. I need the full amount. If you want to come down the five cents, I'll spot you that you can write me a check for $3,363. So I sent her that and the joint stipulation edits. And I said, please respond in the next few days. Otherwise I'm going to have to go to the courthouse and start to fill out the summons request to serve her in Oklahoma. Well, a few days later, I received this mail in uh, my email inbox. She says, I am now able to offer you the full amount of $3,363.05 that you were requesting. They sent me a check, a release statement that I also ended up tweaking a bit, and I had to file a few papers with the court to dismiss the case. But that's how I got the full ask amount. Now you might be asking, $3,363.05, that's different than the $2,650 that was your diminished value from the expert. And that's true. The difference is about $713. The reason for that difference is I had to come out of pocket $713 to actually file the case with the court, send the summons, send the alias summons, all the postage that was needed to do that. I kept good track of those expenses. That's what I shared with the attorney as to what my value was. That's why the check I received was for the full amount. That's what it took to get my full diminished value ask back from State Farm. I hope that in some small way, if you're ever in a David versus Goliath situation like this, especially if you're facing State Farm, that this video has really helped you. But now that I've helped you, help me a little bit. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Why do you think it took all of that work to get that check from State Farm? And what do you think made the difference? Was it the wording of the joint stipulation? Was it the fact that I had to summons someone from Oklahoma to Florida? Was it related to the fact that I didn't name State Farm originally in the case? Or was it that John Hackett, my expert, that his stellar reputation? I really don't know exactly why they settled. My guess is it's likely because the amount was so small. But if that were the case, why waste all the expenses or for me to take them to trial? Help me out with that in your comments below. As always, subscribe and like this video so that it helps others.